Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Huck and the magazine industry. This video is useful for you if you are an Educast A-level media studies student and Huck magazine is an optional text that schools can choose to study. Not every school studies it, but if you do study it, you will study it alongside Women's Realm magazine and it could pop up in the component two exam in section B. This video is going to specifically focus on the magazine industry and the company TCO London that prints um, Huck magazine. So this is going to go through lots of factual information and talk to you about what's important that you need to know for the exam. The magazine industry in general is in decline. Um, when I speak to my students about this, some of them have never bought a magazine in their lives and a lot of their parents don't really read magazines anymore either. Whereas when I was a kid, a lot more people read and bought magazines on a more regular basis. Most of the time, um, the, the reasons that people aren't buying magazines is that they can get all of that information for free online. So why would you bother? And a lot of magazines are quite expensive as well. People don't want to spend, you know, between three and six pounds on a magazine each month to get information, which by the time it's printed is kind of out of date because it takes at least a month and a half to kind of get that printing process underway. And so things could have happened and all that information and news is kind of old news by the time it actually gets into a shop. Whereas you can get much more up to date, instant news and information online. So the magazine industry is, is in decline and a lot of magazines over the years have shut down because of this. It's a six pound a copy magazine, which is a hefty price and it does okay. The sales are pretty good. Um, it's not a huge mainstream monthly magazine like Vogue or Elle magazine or anything like this, but it's a niche magazine and that means that it appeals to a very specific audience. And actually magazine companies now are finding that mainstream magazines are failing but niche magazines, those magazines that appeal to a very small audience, are actually doing quite well. So you really need to understand why a niche magazine with a large price tag of £6 a copy is so successful in its own way. So we're going to go through the company that makes it and why it might be doing that well. Huck isn't a magazine which kind of tries to give out factual information or advice to its audience. It's not teaching you how to style your hair or telling you what to buy in terms of the best makeup brands or the best mobile phones. It's more of a culture based magazine. So it feels very much like an art or photography magazine. And actually the photography is a massive part of Huck magazine. People buy the magazine for the way it looks and the way it feels. It's the quality of the paper, it's thick, and it feels more like a book than a magazine. And I know some of you will never have seen the actual magazine. You might have just seen the PDF like copies that the exam board have, but the actual magazine is, is quite thick and it's printed on really thick, high quality matte paper. And so it does feel like a book rather than a thin, cheap magazine. And because of that, I think the audiences feel like they're getting quality when they buy Huck. If any of you study photography or art, you will know perhaps that some people buy art magazines and books to keep as collectibles. They have them, they're like coffee table books and people keep them on their tables in their lounge as like a status symbol, like look at the art that I like. And it's kind of a public thing. You're telling people this is something that I'm interested in. And Huck has become a lot like that. It's a status symbol for audiences. And it's become something a bit like a photography book or magazine that you keep out on your table as something to to display and to collect. And actually on the Huck website and on the TCO London website, you can order back copies. So if you've missed a copy, you can order them. They're more expensive because you kind of missed the publication date, but you can order them. And so there's very much that idea that it's a collectible item and that helps to boost sales as well. It's a bi-monthly magazine, which means it's printed every two months. And that I think maybe helps to justify that six pound cost. You're not having to pay six pounds every month. It's only every two months. So I guess the cost feels a little bit more justified to an audience if they're paying that less often. Huck has quite a loyal fan base. So regular readers that buy every issue. Um, and it's that loyal fan base that's really important. They have to reflect that fan base's interests in their magazine. So including articles that are 
going to particularly appeal to them. Articles about sport, articles about culture, articles about politics, um, articles that perhaps reflect those kind of more left wing ideologies. So making sure that your magazine reflects your audience's or reader's interests is really important. Huck has quite a clear branding as well. Like I said, it feels very much like an art or a photography coffee table book. The simple layout on the pages, tiny font, large pictures. The photography is a real focus on a lot of the pages within the magazine. And you can see that branding is quite consistent on their social media pages and on their website as well. So it very much feels consistently branded and that helps to kind of bring in audiences as well and make it more recognisable. As a lot of audiences now are online, in particular that kind of millennial audience that is the focus for Huck magazine, you have to, as a company, go where your audience are. So it's really important that magazine companies have an online presence now. And TCO London and Huck um, are no different. TCO London have their own website and their own social media pages, and they obviously create their own um, the, a website for Huck, and Huck has its own social media pages as well. They use those um, very, very regularly, several times a day. They're posting new links to stories, new links to content. Um, you know, they're teasing audiences with little snippets of articles, they're posting um, things that encourage audiences to share and like online, and that helps to engage an audience. Um, in particular, they have um, a quite a big following on Instagram. Now, Instagram obviously, uh, you know, appeals to that kind of arty audience who perhaps like visuals, photographers, that kind of thing. So choosing your social media platforms um, carefully is important. They're obviously not on TikTok and Snapchat because that's a much younger audience. But focusing on things like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is where their particular demographic is. It's important that your online content is not exactly what is in the magazine. Otherwise, what would be the point in selling the magazine? No one would buy it if they could get the exact content on the websites. So um, what TCO London does um, with the Huck website is ensure that the content um, you know, it has these synergetic links. There are similar stories. There are links between the stories on the line and in the actual paper copy of the, the magazine, but it's like extended. Um, it's something above and beyond what is in the magazine. So for example, when the set issue, um, the defiance issue came out, there's the skateboarding teenage utopia article in the magazine. On their website, they had a whole um, range of other shots, like it was like almost like an artistic photography um, layout about skateboarding. And then on their YouTube channel, they had a film all about um, skateboarding uh, in these European countries. So it was linked content, it was very similar. So if you wanted to find out more and learn more, the website and social media provided you with those opportunities. But it's not exactly the same content because they want people to still buy the paper copy. The Huck YouTube channel in particular is popular as well. Um, because photography and filmmaking is a big part of the Huck culture, a lot of people visit their YouTube channel to watch more in-depth films about some of the content that they have done articles on. And some of their films are, you know, have had a lot of views. And so um, it kind of is there to target those people who like that kind of visual culture of filmmaking and photography. Advertising is incredibly important in the magazine industry, more so really than the actual sales of a magazine. You need to be able to show that your magazine is getting readers, but you need to do that because you actually normally make more money from the people placing adverts in your magazine. And they will only place the adverts if they know that you're getting a good number of readers. So it's, um, it's a real juggling act and it's important that TCO London has these really great relationships and partnerships with brands to encourage them to place adverts in the magazine. And TCO London works really hard to develop these relationships. So on their website, you can see that they actually, part of their company, they've diversified into other areas. They're not just a magazine publisher. They actually run their own advertising and marketing agency. So companies can come to them directly and create their own branded campaigns for products. And there's a lot of uh, large companies that they've worked with over the years to do that. And that is building up these great relationships in an attempt to help those uh, companies feel like they are a trusted, um, brand and that they then want to place adverts inside their magazines.
they have diversified into other areas as well. They don't just do magazines and marketing. They also have their own printing company or printing press, so they are vertically integrated. And they do printing projects for companies and brands as well. So if you want to print leaflets or business cards or postcards or books, then you can go to TCO London and they will be able to do that for you as well. Um, and because they have their own printing um, uh, facilities and resources, it means that they, they don't have to outsource that to another company. It saves them money in the long run. And it means that they have the ability to print huck on you know high quality paper with the high quality ink um, because they can do that in-house for less money. They also own their own event space called 71A which is the address essentially of the street in London. Um, it's a kind of art gallery but they also have a cinema there as well and they rent that space out to artists, photographers, anyone who wants to put on some kind of artistic cultural event. Um, and so it's, you know, finding ways of, of increasing your profit from all of your resources. So having event space, you could have a photographer that you've worked with perhaps in the magazine. Maybe they rent your space out um, as an art gallery. Maybe they, you know, hold the film about their, their artwork in your cinema. And then maybe they want to print their photo book and they use your printing press. So if you can do, if you've diversified into all these areas, it means that you can create these more holistic relationships with other people. Um, and if you can offer to do all of these things for them, then they're more likely to work with you. TCO London is a very small company um, in relation to a lot of other magazine companies. They only make two magazines in comparison to when we looked at IPC Media, um, which is now future, part of Future PLC, who make hundreds of magazines. Um, you know, TCO London just makes two, which are Huck and Little White Lies, which is a film magazine. In fact, they only have 33 staff, all based within a London office in the UK, which is very small um, and um, means they're doing a lot but it means they're a much smaller independent company they're not owned by a big conglomerate you know they do everything they do a lot in-house but they're not part of a larger organization so being independent I suppose means that they can make things that are a bit more original a bit more different a bit more alternative Despite the fact that they're based in a UK in a London office with just 33 staff, they actually have a network of people globally that they work with. So they outsource or they freelance, uh, they pay freelancers like photographers and journalists and writers from all over the world to write content for them. And in fact, on their website, you can actually pitch ideas to them directly, which is quite unusual for a lot of magazines who have their, often have their own internal writing staff. Um, so you can uh, email them, you could do this as a student and you could say I've got a great idea for a piece that I want to write, here's the rough idea, send it to them and then they might contact you and ask you to write it. Um, and so having this network of globalised journalists and photographers and designers means that they can actually outsource to other people if they want to. And because it's a global network all around the world, it means that they can get those stories from other countries really easily. Being that it's quite a niche magazine, it's not available in a whole load of shops. It's highly unlikely that if you're in your local Tesco's, you're going to see Huck on the shelves. But if you are in a more cosmopolitan town or city and you are in a larger um, magazine shop, something like a WH Smith maybe in a, a, a like central London, then you may well find Huck on the shelves. Um, it's not necessarily the sort of magazine that people pick up if they don't know about it because it's more expensive and because it is quite niche. What you generally want as a company is to try and get people to know about your magazine in the hopes that they will then buy it. Um, so um, TCO works with a couple of different distribution companies in order to make this happen. They are available digitally, so um, you can literally download a digital copy of the magazine to your phone or tablet um, via a digital magazine distribution company called Zinio. Um, now, Zinio is a very large magazine distribution company. Um, they distribute um, a huge number. It says 6,000 magazines and they have 10 million customers worldwide. So huge distribution company. Um, and having your magazine available digitally, first of all, great way of targeting those modern audiences who are spending more and more time on their tablets and phones anyway. They might not want a print copy of the magazine. It might actually be better for them to have a digital version. But also, if you know, like when you've been on something like Netflix, if you've watched a programme, it then makes suggestions of if you've watched this, you might also like this. And that's exactly what Zinio does for magazine readers. 
If a magazine uh, reader reads a magazine on Zinio that is a little bit like Huck magazine, perhaps they read a photography or a culture based magazine, Zinio will suggest similar magazines to them and Huck is one of the magazines they might suggest to particular readers. So it's a great way of trying to increase your audience base by kind of help getting another company to tell you that them about your magazine. Zinio is quite attractive as well because you do not have to subscribe to a whole year's worth of a magazine. A lot of subscription services for other magazines will make you subscribe for six months or 12 months up front, which is quite a big cost. But actually with Zinio, they will let you just buy one off magazines digitally. So if you just want to try Huck once, but you don't want the commitment of signing up for 12 months, then you can do that. And that is quite appealing to a lot of readers. And they also use a company called Stack as well, which is very similar. It's a digital online company that you can subscribe to if you want to read unusual alternative niche magazines, but you just don't really know what to buy. If you subscribe to Stack, Stack will send you in the post um, a selection of random, unusual, quirky magazines each month for you to try out. And Huck is one of those magazines that sometimes appears in people's um, post boxes. Um, and so it's a good way of, um, you know, trying to find new audiences. If people um, suddenly receive your magazine through the post, they think, well, I've never read this before, but I'll give it a go then, um, you know, potentially they might then go on to become regular readers or subscribers. So overall, TCO London is quite a small, um, independent magazine company, but that has diversified into lots of areas to ensure that it actually is still making a good amount of revenue and profit. They're not part of a big conglomerate. They're not owned by a large global corporation but they've still managed to create a little area of success for themselves within this niche area of magazines that they create. So that was my easy to understand guide to Huck and the magazine industry TCO London. Don't forget to subscribe to my other videos because I've got other videos that are relevant to you both for Huck, Women's Realm and all the other A-level and GCC set text for media studies and if there is any other videos that you want drop me a comment below and I'll see what I can do.